I'm just waiting for some people to join us. We are late by about 20 minutes. That was because of technical glitch. Facebook was not letting us go live. Uh, it was asking us to download softwares and things like that, which wasn't the case uh, when we were having the previous modules. Okay, so I'll start the morning. Good morning, Namaskar, and Pranam to everybody who's there. Uh, watching this live video uh, unfortunately we are undergoing a huge uh, public health crisis uh, rightly named as a pandemic because it's troubling everybody right across the countries um, and this nature of crisis this nature of pandemic is perhaps the first time we are witnessing uh, such a large scale of uh, health crisis that's happening across the globe and more so in India uh, right from the time we had the partial lockdown, then we had restrictions, and now we have a total lockdown, all done in our safety um, and to maintain social distancing physically, not mentally. Mentally, we need to be united and one at this point of time. Uh, physically and geographically, we are far away, which is fine, which is required, which is necessity, and every one of us should follow that. Um, keeping in uh, time of the crisis that we have been following, a lot of our students. Uh, had requested to go live with yoga classes so that people can do something uh, at home. That's really good. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, although I had been practicing yoga ever since even the lockdown was not announced and there were partial lockdown and temporary closure, uh, but from today onwards, I've decided to go live for uh, this particular uh, half an hour and an hour or so as required and share my yoga knowledge with you. Um, even I can't go to my uh, yoga ashram. We are not allowed to move out of this area. Um, so uh, I go live from my home. Okay, so this is my home and I'm going live from here uh, for the yoga session today. Okay, so for those of you who do not know who I am, uh, I'm Samal Sharma. Uh, I'm a public health specialist. Um, and I'm looking after and running a 60-year-old yoga institute here in Lucknow. Uh, and I've learned most of my knowledge from my guru and my father, uh, who's currently uh, uh, heading the institute. So I am the coordinator of yogic treatments in Lucknow, and I am the director of Fitness Forever Studio uh, by name of Yoga Terminus. That's also in Lucknow. Okay. So uh, the way we have modulized this entire session for uh, especially end COVID-19 lockdown is that we're gonna have two parts of it. I'm gonna focus on two major problems which people will be focusing uh, and facing right now. Problem one is immunity. We need to have a very strong immunity, we need to strengthen and build a very strong immunity at this point of time, right? Uh, see, it's not just about end COVID related symptoms and end COVID-19 related uh, cold cough pulmonary disorders, but it's also in general. If in general, your respiratory system and pulmonary system are not strong enough and you have basic seasonal, seasonal change, cold, cough, flu, influenza, sneezing, that too puts you at risk. Okay? You get at a higher risk zone than the others in the society if you are more prone to cold, cough, sinusitis, migraine, uh, bronchitis, asthma and similar other breathing related issues. Therefore, at this point of time, it's very important for us to have our immunity in our hands and have a very strong, strengthened immunity so that even a normal cold, cough and influenza does not affect you. Because remember, if it does affect you and you are facing any of the crisis, then you immediately go into the risk zone. So we don't want to do that. That's why yoga can give you a very strong immunity booster, can strengthen and build your immunity to a very high level. Over a period of time, this, was, this will be the first part of uh, the focus of my sessions. The second part of the focus of my session would be on mental health. So we'll split the week into threes to two. Thrice a week I would take classes which strengthen and build your immunity. And twice a week we'll take classes which focus on your mental health. Because at this point of time, isolation can be very dangerous for a lot of people. You might feel very frustrated, anxious, scared, right? Uh, especially anybody who's going through a severe mental health problem, you lock them down within the four walls and they fear more, 
right? So therefore, it's really important for us to tackle the mental health along with the physical health, right? So uh, mental health will be also one of our very critical focus. I'll talk more about mental health uh, day after tomorrow uh, on the Friday and Saturday session when we focus on uh, mental health. Uh, for now, this is good to go. Okay. So immunity boosters are really, really essential, right? And we're going to focus entire sessions on a lot of heavy breathing, pranayama, along with some basic asanas and kriyas, which expand your chest region, which work on your nasal region to your lungs, so entire respiratory and pulmonary system. All the yoga exercises work on that. We will focus on that as well. Okay. Uh, if there's any questions, comments, suggestions that you would like to share, please feel free to comment below uh, or write to the email ID mentioned in the description and we will get back to you and answer every question individually as much as we can and as much as we try to do that. Okay. So I'll not waste a lot of time because we have already uh, started uh, today's session uh, slightly uh, late. Uh, but over a period of time, I think all of us have realized that we need to acquire skills that we can do on our own. Today, when everything is shut down, all our uh, mechanized uh, forms of uh, fitness studios and uh, you know gyms and machineries are shut down and we can't access them, not everybody can access them at home. Uh, that is the time when yoga is the answer because once you learn it, once you've acquired the skill, you don't need anybody to teach you that. You don't need any guru, you don't need any machineries, you don't need any studios. You can do it on your own. All right? So you don't need particularly any particular studio to do that. Right? So you need to learn from the scratch. Right? So you need to really, really understand. Thank you for joining us from, uh, I think it's Brazil if I'm ready. You're most welcome. To the live streaming so we will start with some yoga sessions which we can focus on immunity you have joined us at the right time thanks for your comment so you can log in and uh, join us all of you uh, whether members non-members i'm keeping it an open live studio for everybody no no requirement of any link no requirement of any passwords you can just log into the live streaming which is going to be absolutely public for everybody all right so can we start with the yoga session today? Let's begin. All right. So the first rule of yoga is that you have to have at least two glasses of lukewarm water. Water is a very essential part of your immunity booster. Please have access to clean drinking water and prefer lukewarm water till the time this COVID-19, Novel COVID-19 crisis remains. Cold water will not do good. Normal temperature water is fine, but at least in your morning sessions, have as much as possible, have lukewarm water, okay? So, have at least about two glasses of lukewarm water before we start the yoga session. If you do not have lukewarm water today and you're not prepared with that, please have normal temperature water, all right? We need to have at least three to three and a half liters of water per day. Please remember, so if you uh, are drinking bottled water or if you are drinking a normal regular bottled water at home, so one bottle is about a liter. You need to have about three to three and a half liters of water per day. That detoxes your body, cleanses your body, removes the excess of cough, removes the excess of toxins and detoxes your body. Remember, water is the only measure through which your body detox. Whether it is sweat, it's tears, you're crying and it's tears, it's urine or it's stool. All four main mediums through which your body excretes the toxins, water is the key. So you need to have anyhow, have at least three, three and a half liters of water until and unless water quantity is restricted by your doctor for any particular illness. But you really, really need to have a healthy normal person needs to have three, three and a half liters of water daily. All right. Okay, so we, are, we have had water. I hope even you all have had uh, at least 
a glass of water if you can't have two three glasses from today that's fine so before we start the session we'll invoke uh, i'll invoke the guru and because we are going to focus entirely on breathing remember breath is what keeps you alive when i teach this in yoga ashram i always tell people if two people are lying down on the floor you can't make out who's alive and who's dead both of them have same organs have two hands two eyes nose lips ha- feet everything is same the only thing that differs in the two bodies who are lying down on the floor is the breath the life energy the atma if if either of these three factors if you are an atheist you don't believe in atma that's fine but whether you call it the life energy you call it the breath or you call it the atma all these three factors are essentially engraved in us which proves that you are alive so the difference between two people lying down on the floor one is a corpse a dead body and the other one is alive and the main way you distinguish is the breath the pulse the heart rate bp etc so let's check later if somebody faints in the first thing you check is please check if the person is breathing and if the person is breathing yes that means the person is alive right so prana prana means life pranayam which is the translation of breathing exercises in yoga breathing exercises in yoga are called pranayam so they means we are working with the prana prana is the life energy within your body right so the first mantra i'll invoke the guru my guide and the teacher and the second mantra in the consecutively which i'll say i will focus on the breath the pranayam and then we'll begin the module for the today at about 8:30 by my 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 watch all right fine प्रज्ञान विदेही द फर्स्ट श्लोक दैट आई रिसाइटेड इज इनवोकिंग द गुरु विद इन यू द गुरु हु इज टॉट यू थिंग्स द सेकंड मंत्र दैट आई इनवोक इज द प्राणायाम मंत्र व्हिच फोकसेस ऑन द ब्रेथ एंड द प्राण व्हिच इज योर सोर्स ऑफ लाइफ एनर्जी टू ट्रांसलेट इट रफली फॉर एवरीबॉडी टू अंडरस्टैंड um we say that prana swedang vashe sarvam your prana has a control over everything it's omnipresent it's present everywhere it controls everything it has a relation with everything it has a strong connection to everything just like how a mother nurtures her child right prana swedang vashe sarvam tridevay at pratishtitam in all the three lokas in all the three levels of our existence in all the three geographical levels of our existence prana is the common factor which is there mateva putrana rakshaswa the way a mother nurtures a child similar way your prana your breathing nurtures you it grows you it nurtures you it nurtures your life all right so let's begin with the yoga session today if in anything you can't uh, see me there's any confusion you can ask i prepared a short module for each day um i will translate that and share it with you uh, either via the comment section or inbox it to you uh, individually uh, both in the hindi script and in the english script so you can keep a copy of it in front of you right it'll help you to follow as i talk so you can follow the script and you can also learn the names right so the most important thing for a pulmonary system 
and for body detox cleansing is something that is called as shat karma shat karms are detox therapies which we can't teach virtually but you can always learn post and covid crisis get stoned down and it's and you're allowed to move out and move uh, to spaces you can learn something called the shat karma which are natural scientific body detox uh, therapies right so they they detox the water cleansing therapies you use water to clean your stomach your intestine it's called kunjal when you do it for stomach it's called shankh prakshalan when you do it for your intestine and jal neti is perfect for uh, breathing related issues uh, but preferably always learned under guidance of a guru and not uh, learned on your own because uh, if there's any crisis or you do it wrongly then there are harmful effects of that as well i will keep on putting disclaimers for different illnesses uh, different precautions you need to take if you are a patient of blood pressure if you have neck pain or you are a patient of cervical spondylitis you have diabetes or you have any critical illness like cancer kidney problem um then please do pay attention to all the uh, uh disclaimers and all the suggestions that i'll be putting from time to time all right so the first asan that we are going to do today is the sarp asan okay sarp asan sarp is a snake so sarp asan is taken from a snake all right so we'll go and perform sarp asan first thank you for joining us uh, the other people who are who have joined us welcome we are just going to start the yoga performances right now so we were just uh, having a lot of conversations on different issues but this is the first yoga asan that we are performing right asan of physical postures pranayam is breathing exercises there's a distinction uh, i'll try to use the right word at the right place right uh, because i'm also carrying the legacy uh, and responsibility of a 60 year old institute here in lucknow uttar pradesh in india we are running the institute since uh, last 60 years it was established in 1960 in 2020 we have completed 60 years of our existence all right so the first asan we'll do is sarpasan you have to lie down in sarpasan on your stomach right hands by your side your toes will be tucked in first please see and then perform it's always better to observe and then perform i'll repeat the exercise twice forehead on the floor you have to inhale up inhale look up to the sky exhale and come down inhale and go up again exhale and come down third and the final round inhale and go up exhale and come down fourth time inhale and go up this time we have to try to look at our toes above our shoulders twist from your torso 1 2 3 and 4 look up forehead down right this is sarpasan now i will perform sarpasan in the lateral posture so that you can see this time if you wish those who have understood you can perform with us so for sarpasan please lie down main is your feet your toes of the feet if you can see i'm indicating will be placed inwards hands next to your chest elbows up in the sky forehead down inhale and go up look up at to the sky exhale and come down inhale and go up again exhale and come down third and the final time Inhale and go up. This time we'll try to look at our toes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Up and down. All right. This is Sarpasan. Anybody who has got any critical problem with your uh, spinal cord, please avoid to do that. Uh, you can do it as per your capacity and raise your body only halfway through if you have problem in. Uh, getting up completely all right fine we'll do the second breathing kriya shwas kriya which is called shwas prashwas shwas means inhalation prashwas means exhalation right it works on your entire system so you have to stand with your feet together hands by your side the, there are four postures the 
first posture shwas prashwas look in front straight inhale and exhale three times you can gradually increase the numbers to 5 and 10 people who have heavy respiratory problem please do 5 and 10 for others just to begin with it's 3 5 10 counts so three counts we'll practice here look in the front after the three rounds in the front second posture is look up to the sky and inhale and exhale thrice all right so if you look in the front you inhale exhale thrice you look up to the sky inhale exhale thrice the third posture you look at the distance of about 6 feet from where you are standing so wherever your shadow falls according to your individual height Wherever your shadow falls, according to your individual height, at six feet, look down and inhale and exhale. All right. Fourth and final posture. Look down at your toes. Those who have neck pain or cervical spondylitis, you'll skip the fourth posture. But for the others, look down on your toes and inhale and exhale. This is Shwas Prashwas. Uh, there are four steps to that. Please continue your practice. I'm just repeating the steps. Step one of Shwas Prashwas is you have to look in the front and inhale and exhale thrice. Step two is you have to look up to the sky and inhale and exhale thrice. Step three is look at a distance of six feet, inhale and exhale thrice. And step four is look down on your toes and inhale and exhale. Anybody who has got any neck pain problem or spondylitis, you will skip the step, the fourth step. You will not look down. You look in the front. You look at the sky and you look at six feet. That's it. Skip the fourth step. All right. Now after Shwas Prashwas, we'll do Kapol Shakti. Uh, it's taken from a crow. Kapol. The way a ka- crow makes its beak. That's how we call it, Kapol. Again, I'll show the linear version and the side version, so do not worry. First, just see. Yoga is about patience. You know, acrobatics is not yoga. Yoga is a deeper connection within yourself and your breathing, right? So first, just observe what I am doing. Try to absorb it, learn it. Second time when I do, you can practice it. All right? So Kapol. Feet together, hands by your side, spinal cord straight. With both your hands, join all the fingers. like this and the thumb together close your nostril with the thumb inhale from your mouth pump up your lungs and your cheeks with air chin down hold your breath for three counts 1 2 3 look up open your nose and exhale so we'll inhale from the mouth but we'll exhale from the nose all right so i do it again again remember if you have any neck related problem you have spinal cord you will not look down so you will inhale up you will hold it in front 1 2 3 you will exhale from the mouth so we'll inhale from the mouth we'll fill the air in the lungs and the mouth but we'll exhale from the nose i'll give you the side version now looking into the side version just put your fingers together thumbs together now you can practice it along with me close your nostrils with a thumb inhale from your mouth the only thing that you have to remember in kapol is you will inhale from your mouth like like a crow's beak and you'll exhale from your nose right so chin down look up exhale from your nostrils all right so now we'll do something for our neck because this is the throat region why are throat swaps taken in end covid 19 because a lot of virus grows cultivates in your this part of the body the mouth and the throat even before it enters into your uh, body internally all right so we'll do uh, something for our neck feet together hands by your side this is simple you can continue to do it with me first posture is look up and look down while you go up and you look you inhale while you go down you exhale all right so i begin exhale 
inhale exhale two third round inhale exhale up now anybody who has got cervical problem or neck pain you will modify it how will you modify it the ground rule for people with neck pain and cervical spondylitis is you will not look down right you will go back stop here stop here stop here and for everybody else who does not suffer from neck pain or cervical spondylitis it will be come down one two one two and up right this is the first posture of griva shakti the second posture is sideways so it's one inhale exhale in the front inhale on the side exhale in the front all right now practice three rounds so three rounds up and down three rounds left and right now the third posture of griva shakti is clockwise and anti clockwise anybody who has got cervical problem or anybody who has got neck problem you will not do the third step just relax let others do it the third step is clockwise and anti clockwise rotation back then anti clockwise again you go clockwise and you go anti clockwise you do it for six times up and down if you have neck problem or cervical please don't do it all right so griva shakti has got three postures neck rotation has got three postures first posture is backward and down backward and down right second posture is left and right left and right and third posture is clockwise and anti clockwise right I hope you have got sarpasan you have got shwas prashwas you have got kapol and you have got griva all right now we'll do kati shakti anybody who has got slip disc a lower back ache so you have any sort of a lower back ache or slip disc problem please do not practice it right for others please join me in the practice it expands the capacity of your lung i'll do it in the frontal view then i'll do it in the side view Well, and then you practice it. All right. We'll start with five rounds of Kati Shakti. Slowly, we can increase to more numbers. All right. So hands by your side. You have to inhale and go up. You have to exhale and touch your toes. Again up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale down. Inhale. Exhale down. Last round. Exhale down. All right. I'll give the lateral view. Inhale and go up. Exhale and touch your toes. Is do it for five times. Kati Shakti. People with any lower back issues, slip disc will not do. Others, please practice it. So you have to inhale and go up. Exhale and go down and touch your toes. Then again, inhale and go up. exhale and come down and touch your toes so that's kati shakti it strengthens your kati kati is the waist so it strengthens your waist region your abdomen region but it also expands your lung it strengthens your pulmonary system and hence it builds your immunity which will help you to uh, have another layer of protection in this uh, time of public health crisis of end covid 19 all right so now after kati shakti i hope you all have practiced kati shakti we'll do veer bhadrasan which is the warrior posture right so you see a lot of celebrities doing that uh, i'll show you the celebrity version first and i'll see you the version that strengthens your pulmonary system and your immunity right so the celebrity version is you have to have a gap of about 2 feet between your feet right if you want as a support the leg which is behind you can shift it instead of keeping it lat vertically you can just move it and keep it horizontally to support you right first part of your leg goes in the front and your hands will be straight up and you look up in the front the feet which is in the front that hand will be in the front the feet which is behind and you will be lateral but you look in the front all right that's warrior posture or veer bhadrasan in english it's called the warrior posture and then we repeat it from the other side if you can do it with both the legs vertical it's fine if you can't you can just move your leg like this change the direction but let's keep it like this for now the feet which is in the front that hand goes in the front the other hand goes straight up in the back i'll show you the lateral version of this in the second time right up 
straight up here, just hand straight up there, a little up more, and inhale and hold. And back. Right. So this is Veer Bhadrasan. Um, I call it the celebrity version because it's the very contemporary and um, very technical form of warrior posture, Veer Bhadrasan. Now, please uh, try to observe this particular posture of Veer Bhadrasan, the warrior posture, which I'm going to perform now, because that is what strengthens your pulmonary system. It expands your lung to the most capacity. All right? Um, it's same, similar. First leg in the front, a gap of about two feet between your legs. If you can keep both legs vertically, brilliant. If you can't, just change the direction of your leg to help you stand still, right? This will go in the front, but knees will not go beyond your feet. It has to be in the level of your feet. You, you can't surpass your toes. It has to be straight up. Then you have to inhale up and go up. Go back up to the sky. Hold, exhale, and come down. So you have to inhale and go up, look up to the sky, hold as per your capacity, and then come. Anybody who has got any vertigo problems means you feel giddy, chakkar aate hai aapko, or you have any severe back issues, you don't need to do it. You can do the first version, the easier version, where, where there's no exertion on the back. For those who do not have any back problems, you do it like this, a gap of about two feet between the legs. If you, if you can keep both the legs vertically, it's fine. If you can't, you can just change this leg like this, perpendicular to your body. This will go in front. You inhale and go up. <sighs> Exhale and come back in the front. It's Veer Bhadrasana. It's an asana. Right? It's not a breathing exercise. It's not a pranayam. It's an asana. And you can repeat it from the other side as well. You can change the direction of your leg. This will be in front. Go up. Inhale. <sighs> exhale and come down. If you have done it at your home right now, try to experience which part of your body it exerts most pressure. It's not your legs. Of course, there'll be some amount of strength on your legs, but mostly it strengthens and works on your um, lungs. And you go back. So you have inhaled, your lungs are full capacity. Lungs are full, they expand and you're looking back. And then you exhale and come down. So it strengthens your pulmonary system to a very great order. All right? Fine. <clears throat> now after Veer Bhadrasan, I think we need to relax a little bit. Um, <laughs> I don't want to tire you all. Yoga should not tire you. It should energize you. Right? Um, that's the difference between uh, a lot of other forms of fitness modules where um, you feel exhausted and tired after performing. But that's not the case with yoga. You must feel energized, powerful, peaceful, and relaxed from within and alert and strengthened from outside. All right? So now we'll do, hands will be in the Jnana Mudra. If you can sit in uh, Padmasan, you can sit. If you can't sit in Padmasan, problem, you can sit in Ardha Padmasan. So either you can sit cross-legged, you can sit with one leg on the top, right? which is Ardha Padmasan, which means half of a Padmasan. And if you can, then you can put both the legs up, which is Purna Padmasana. All right, so I'm gonna do it in Purna Padmasana. Don't force yourself, don't exert. These kind of postures you can't develop over a live video by practicing yoga for just about 20, 25 minutes. You need a lot of practice and then you will be also able to do Padmasana. So if you can't do Ardha Padmasana, you can sit cross-legged normally. And if you're doing at home where you can't sit on the floor and you have any problem, you can do all these exercises while sitting on a chair, right? What we call chair yoga. You can do it on a chair as well, okay? Hands will be in the Gyan Mudra. I want to point out Gyan Mudra is not putting excessive force between your finger, the first finger and the thumb. It is not closing your fingers like this. I'm just zooming in and showing it to you. So don't put your fingers like this. Don't put your fingers like this. Not anything above it, right? Not anything below. Don't try to hold it, exert pressure, put it above. Just the tips. Only the tip of your first finger and the thumb will gently join each other. That's it. That's the mudra. Don't please do not do like this. Mudra is just a closure. You don't need to close it like this. You just need the tips to be joined and that's where the flow of energy works. So hands will be in Gyan Mudra. Please learn this is Gyan Mudra. 
so that whenever I say put your hands in Gyan Mudra, put your hands in Gyan Mudra, you know what is Gyan Mudra, right? So both your hands in Gyan Mudra, you can sit in Padmasan, Alti Padmasan, or um, in Sukhasan, which is normal cross legs, right? So you can sit normal cross leg or on a chair. Your spinal cord should be straight. The first exercise that we are going to do, again, please observe first and then practice it. The first exercise that we are going to do is Geheri Shwas Prashwas. Shwas Prashwas is inhalation and exhalation. Geheri means deep. So deep breathing, right? Deep inhalation and exhalation. The first rule even before we practice for Geheri Shwas Prashwas is that your exhalation will be longer than the inhalation. Your, your time that you take to exhale out the air from your body should be much longer than the time that you take to inhale. So if you inhale in the count of two, you must exhale in the count of four, right? So we, I'm gonna do that. You can shut your eyes and try to travel with your breathing. That's also the very first basic meditative technique where you learn to recognize your breath, you learn to travel with your breath. So in Gehri Shwas Prashwas, in deep breathing, please shut your eyes. I mean, you can have a look at me first and then shut your eyes. Otherwise, how would you be able to practice that, right? Yeah, so I'm shutting down my eyes. Inhale slowly. Exhale slowly. Inhale. Exhale. Eyes will be closed. You can try to focus between your both eyebrows. So between your eyebrows is the Agya Chakra. You can focus on the Agya Chakra if you want and inhale slowly inhale up when you think air has reached the tip of your toes that is Gehri Shwas Prashwas that is Gehri Shwas Prashwas when you feel your entire body is full of air right from the tip of your head to the tip of your toes is full with air you have filled air in all parts of your body and slowly start exhaling it if you inhale at the count of one two exhale in the count of one two three five rounds of Gheri Shwas Prashwas. Very important to reach the last lymph node. Very important to reach the last part of your lung. Every lining, heavy breathing, jumping, running, it does help you. But to reach to the points where nothing can reach you, you have to practice this. All right, so deep breathing, Gheri Shwas Prashwas. I'll do it again, please do it with me. five rounds of nasal breathing since you are doing a lot of breathing exercises i want to tell you one thing please avoid breathing from your mouth from your mouth i beg your pardon avoid breathing from your mouth our body is designed in certain way each part of the body is supposed to perform a function right mouth is for eating food nose is for breathing therefore nasal breathing is healthy oral breathing is not healthy so you have to focus on the nasal breathing, inhalation and exhalation from your nose. So if your mouth tends to open, immediately the minute you realize that your mouth is opening, shut it down and continue to breathe with your nostril. Alright, so Gehri Shwas Prashwas. Now after Gehri Shwas Prashwas, we'll do something which is very, very popular. This is Kapalabhati. Today we are going to do it just in the numbers of 5 to 20. So 5 slowly to 10. 10 slowly to 15, 15 to 20. Please do not practice Kapal Bhati on advice of anybody. 50, 100, 200, 15 minutes, half an hour, don't do that. Kapal Bhati can be very harmful for the patients of blood pressure. It can shoot up your blood pressure or it can prevent your blood pressure from lowering down, right? There are several other pranayams, several other breathing techniques. You just don't need Kapal Bhati. That's just one of the breathing techniques. There are several other breathing techniques. Practice the others. Why you want to do a one breathing technique which is harmful for your particular problem, which could be blood pressure, right? So hands again in Gyan Mudra. I repeat, just the tips of the thumb and the first finger will join. No closures. You don't have to close it. You don't have to exert pressure, nothing. Just the tips will join. Put your hands on your knees. Spinal cord straight. You can again sit in Padmasan, which is half Padmasan, full Padmasan, or you can sit down in cross leg normal posture as per your convenience. Alright? Now, Kapal Bhati is 
forceful exhalation. The entire focus in Kapalbhati is on the exhalation, not so much on inhalation. Inhalation happens by default. All right, so I'll do. I'm doing it, and then you can do it after I do. It. All right, one, two, three, start. Anybody who's got a severe neck pain, cervical problem, avoid to do this. Anybody who's got very high blood pressure, you can do it in lower numbers. If your blood pressure is normal, it comes normal while you test it, you can do it in 5, slowly increase it to 15, 10, 15 and then 20. I'm not prescribing more than 20 Kapal Bhatis to anybody on day 1 of this module. So please do not risk anything, just follow word by word and don't go above 20 numbers. I'll do Kapal Bharti again. Please practice with me. One, two, three, let's start. Relax. All right. So we have done, while sitting down, the first exercise we have done is Gehri Shwas Prashwas, which is deep breathing. We did the second exercise, which is Kapal Bharti. Now we'll do the third exercise, which is Parvatasana. Parvatasana is mountain posture. Very good if you're feeling lazy and your back is uh, feeling very hurt and cracked at home and you need to do something for your back, right? You're bored sitting at home, you're bored lying down and because of lying down and because of excess of sleep, you're having backache. That's also possible, right? So hands by your side. You have to inhale and go up. Join both your palms and stretch up. Look in the front. Breathing will be normal. Open your palms, exhale and down. All right? So after you reach the mountain posture at the top, your breathing will be normal. Don't try to hold your breathing. So you inhale and go up. Hold the hands. Join both the palms inward. Stretch up. Stretch up a little bit according to your capacity. Inhale normally. Inhalation, exhalation will be normal. Open your palms, exhale and come down. Okay? Is it good? You have to inhale and go up, join both your palms, stretch up a little bit, hands will touch your ears, open your hands, exhale and come down. Parvatasana. It works on your entire spinal cord right up to your uh, the tip of your head, which we call in yoga the Sahastrara Chakra, the last chakra which works on your body. All right. So now we'll do something for our pulmonary system. You can open the Parvatasana. We'll sit in Vajrasana. For those of you who do not know Vajrasana, Vajrasana is sitting on your knees. Again, if you have any knee problem, you have had a recent knee replacement or you have any other problem, please do not do it. Right? You can sit on your chair or you can sit cross leg like we were sitting previously and you can do this in the seat. I'm going to show you the lateral posture just for you to understand how the feet will be. So please understand, feet will be, both the thumbs will be on top of each other. Thumbs will be on top of each other. You make a seat and you sit down on that. All right? So this is Vajrasana. It is also one of the sitting postures. All right, so I'll change my direction. So we'll sit in Vajrasana. Hands will be here. All right? Now we're going to do Singha Asan. Singha Asan. Singha means lion. Have you ever been to uh, any zoo, any sanctuary, or even seen in a movie? How does Singh do? How does the lion breathe? It opens its tongues out. And it breathes from the mouth. Right? Like it's gasping. It's, it's seeking air. That's why it's just so strong. It can run so fast. It can climb the trees up to a distance. Right? So we work on your entire Singhasan works very good on your pulmonary system again on your lungs but also works very good in your throat region so any kind of infection bacteria that is growing out in this part of the region the nasal cavity and the throat that has a very good impact with singhasan so hands will be like this chin down again the disclaimer those who have neck pain and cervical spondylitis will not put their chin down they will look in the mouth and do it for the others please put down Take the tongue out, try to look between your both the eyebrows here at the Agya Chakra, between the eyebrows at the point here. Open your tongue out. Five rounds. Five rounds is just good enough. 
welcome to the people who have joined in now a little late we are almost towards the end of the session please join us tomorrow at 8 8 am in the morning 8 to 8:30 8:45 9 o'clock i have kept a window period of an hour for all of you all right so we'll do singhasan tongue out look down between both your eyebrows and please continue do it for five times gradually you can increase it to eight counts 10 counts so you have to look between both your eyebrows again i have been straight from the beginning i have been saying anybody who has got neck pain or cervical problem will not look down so you will perform singhasan looking in front you'll still look between both the eyebrows but you'll not put your chin down you look up straight and for a healthy normal person who does not have any neck problem any pain you please put your chin down and perform singhasan please do it singhasan cleanses your entire cavity not just your lungs but it also cleanses your nasal cavity it cleanses your throat region so any kind of bacteria infection which is growing in this part of the region like you see see when you have a sore throat your throat pains and if you do gargling with salt water etc it improves right so this part of the region helps you to exhale out everything which is there so it helps you to exhale out all the possible bacteria and viruses which are growing into your nasal cavity and have still not entered your body so singhasan is the lion posture after singhasan you are going to do shankhanad shank you all know shank is a conch right so shankhanad if you have a real shank i don't have it today in the class i'll try to get it tomorrow and we'll blow a shank in the class uh blow a conch a conch shell right uh, but if you do not have then we have a exercise in uh, yoga uh, which is called shankhanad please remember most of the yogic asanas kriyas pranayams are derived from the nature are derived from the what we call the prakriti the mother nature so so when our rishis munis and the ancients people were working on developing yoga they saw a lion and they're like oh that's a lion and that's how the lion is very strong so they came up with singhasan The first asan that we did in the morning was sarp asan. Sarp is a snake. So somebody thought, oh wow, sarp has a very, very fragile, very flexible, but a very strong spinal cord. It can move through, right? Then they developed sarp asan to strengthen your spinal cord to take the oxygen to your brains. Even kapal bhati helps in oxygenation of your brain. We are almost towards the last three uh, uh, practices for today. uh and then i'll i'll join you all tomorrow right so now you can either sit in again ardha padmasan which is one leg up in the front you can sit in sukhasan just like this as you are comfortable those who can you can sit in padmasan but please don't force yourself do not force yourself with practice you can achieve padmasan also hands will be in the gyana mudra I have told you what is Gyan Mudra. The first finger and the thumb they join each other. No, no closure. Just the joining of the tips is Gyan Mudra. Hands will be next to your, on your knees, right? Now we are going to close this fist with the thumbs inside. We are going to close this fist with the thumbs inside and place them on top of each other, like we place the rocks, the tiles on each other. You place it on each other. You inhale first. Inhale and fill fill your lungs to maximum capacity. Put it on your mouth and try to blow inside your hands. This fist that you have, you blow inside it. You don't have to do no, no force, no exertion. You have to slowly, slowly blow it into your fist that you have made. So hands will be like this. right so you will fill air in your lungs you will fill air on your cheeks and you will blow into this just how you would blow a conch shell right the way you blow a conch shell excellent exercise for increasing your lung capacity i mean there can be nothing better thank you for others who are joining in now but we have just last two practices for today and then we are uh, done for the day right so both the uh, fingers and thumbs will be inside fingers on the top make fist we are doing shankhanad the way we have a conch shell a shankha so we are trying to expand the capacity of your lungs hands will be here you inhale after inhaling blow blow the air in the fist
as per your individual capacity practice it for 10 20 30 40 50 seconds as per your capacity take it maximum to a minute more than that is not required and if you have a conch shell at home you must learn how to blow that and blow the conch shell daily and if you don't have a conch shell and you can't blow it with that that's fine you can also uh, blow a balloon so get a packet of balloons and blow one balloon daily and gift it to some little kid who will enjoy the balloon so the balloons expansion also helps in expansion of your lungs in this if you see in shankanada we are trying to exert pressure on the lungs also because lungs are full capacity and you're also trying to exert pressure outward so while you're doing outward there's a tension and pressure between your lung and your breath so that makes your lungs strong and it expands its capacity all right so i hope you all have done shankanas right all right now you can remove your legs from padmasana sit in normal uh, sukhasana or what we call in the cross leg posture i'll teach you the first pranayam of the module we learn various pranayams over the course of my teaching uh, 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 tomorrow's class will also focus on immunity but the classes on uh, friday and saturday i will focus on mental health because if you are at home and you are under lockdown there's a lot of mental health issues that you're going through so um, i'm not sure if we can practice meditation together here but i'll just give you into the entry level of meditation we can't have a full fledged one hour meditation but we do entry level of meditation all right so you can sit in sukhasana for those of you who can otherwise you can do it on your chairs also others can sit in vajrasana i taught you vajrasana a while back right so both the toes will be on top of each other you'll make a seat and you'll sit down on that legs hands will be on your thighs am i clear so vajrasana to sit in vajrasana sit knee if you have any knee replacement knee problems and don't do it you can do it on chair you can also do it in sukhasana the way we did uh, but for those of you who can sit down on your knees folded knees knees will be folded down up right the the thumbs behind will be on top of each other you'll make a seat and sit down on it all right hands will be here I'm going to teach you the first pranayam. Pranayams are specific breathing techniques which are very important for you, right? Uh, you all know Anulom Vilom Pranayam, and if you do not know, you have heard about it. It's very common. Most of the people across the countries, across the states, do Anulom Vilom Pranayam. So they start with that. Hang on, hang on. Please don't start practicing Anulom Vilom because that is not what we are going to do. Over the last 60 years, we have developed our own module. from the original scriptures we do not follow any a particular form or a particular uh, system uh, we mostly follow sukshma vyayam by maharshi kartikeya ji he was founder of that sukshma vyayam is a subtle form of yoga um, uh, but we follow the original scriptures so the Pat patanjali yog sutra hatha yoga pradipika we go to the original text and we get it from there so the anulom vilom the way we do at our center is slightly different you see there are four steps to that nadi shodhani the four steps the first step before you enter anulom vilom is put your hands like this first step is look in the front inhale and exhale thrice we'll again start with counting of 3 with practice gradually you can go to 5 and 10 more than 10 is not required right now so we'll do it for thrice in front look in the front step 1 three rounds of inhalation and exhalation complete breathing second step with your right hand right thumb close your right nostril left hand side nostril will be open inhale and exhale thrice from the left nostril all right step number 3 with the right hand the central both the fingers close your left nostril now right nostril will be open so we'll inhale and exhale from the right nostril thrice close your right nostril with the thumb now we'll start on ulom vilom which is the fourth step so you inhale you will always start on ulom vilom from the left hand side all right so inhale from the left close and exhale from the right inhale from the right close and exhale from the left inhale from the left exhale right all right inhale from right exhale from the left so
So we are using the entire right hand to perform the entire pranayama. To perform entire Nari Shodhan pranayama, we are using the right hand. I'll repeat the steps. The four steps of Nari Shodhan pranayama. First step in Vajrasana, look in front and inhale and exhale thrice normally. Right? After three times, the right thumb of the right hand will close the right nostril. The left nostril will be open. So from the left nostril, inhale and exhale thrice. With the both fingers of between your right hand, close your left nostril. Now the right nostril will be open. Now we'll inhale and exhale from the right nostril. Now with the thumb slowly close your right nostril, open your left nostril. Now we'll do a nulom vilom, which is the fourth step. Inhale from the left nostril, exhale from right. Inhale from the right nostril, exhale from left. All right, so. Now please continue the practice while I explain you. Uh, please understand, most of us know and most of us teach and most of us practice Anulom Vilom Pranayam by just starting to do Anulom Vilom. So you do, right? Uh, that's not wrong, it's right, uh, but that's not complete. In order to complete the entire Nadi Shodhan Pranayam, you need to have all the four steps. Please understand this Nadi Shodhan Pranayam. Nadi means nostril, so you have to cleanse your nostril. If your nostrils are not cleansed, what are you doing Anulom Vilom for? First cleanse your nostrils, both the nostrils, then cleanse your left nostril, then cleanse your right nostril. And after that you start with Anulom, which is the fourth step. So don't directly jump into Anulom Vilom Pranayam by doing Anulom Vilom directly. Hang on, take a pause, learn the right method. Right? So I'm going to do it once like this for others who are doing it in... Uh, sitting posture in Sukhasan or a Padmasana, your one hand will be in Jnana Mudra. Those who are in Vajrasana, both the hands will be flat on your thighs. Those who are doing in a sitting posture or on chair, please put your hands like this. Right? Step one of Nari Shodhan is look up in the front and inhale and exhale. <clears throat> I'm not going to do, you do it. You please try to grasp the right method. Don't do it wrong. If you do it wrong, in yoga everything has got harmful effects. If you do it right, then there are no harmful effects, right? So step one is looking in the front and inhaling and exhaling thrice. Step two is with the right hand, right thumb, close your right nostril. Inhale and exhale from the left hand side. With the both fingers in between, we use this. With the both fingers in between, close your left nostril, inhale and exhale from the right side. Complete breathing, complete exhalation. Now close the right nostril. We start on Nulom Vilom always from the right hand side. Always from the left hand side. I beg your pardon. Start on Nulom Vilom always from the left hand side. So inhale from the left. You inhale from left. Exhale from right, you inhale from right, exhale from left, right? Now the basic rule that you need to follow. If you are inhaling and exhaling three times in the front, three times from the left hand side, three times from the right hand side, then the anulom vilom, alternate nostril breathing will be six times, right? So please understand, it will be double. So you, if you breathe three times in the front, three times from the left hand side, three times from the right hand side, then your anulom vilom which will start from the left hand side will be six times. Inhale, exhale, inhale from the right, exhale from the right, from the left, alternate nostril breathing. So alternate nostril breathing will be almost double. So if you're looking in the front end doing inhalation and exhalation thrice, thrice from the left side, thrice from the right side, then your alternate nostril breathing, that the anulom vilom step will be six times. So remember, today you have learned a new way of doing Nadi Shodhan Pranayama, a new way of doing Anulom Vilom. Just don't directly jump into doing Anulom Vilom directly. Take it easy, take it slow, do all the four steps and then do Anulom Vilom. So before I conclude, the first step is breathing in the front thrice. The second step is a left nostril breathing. The third step is a 
right nostril breathing and the fourth and the final step is closing your right nostril starting from your left inhale exhale inhale exhale alternate nostril breathing all right now uh, we'll do the last asan for today uh, the most popular the most liked uh, and most preferred asan which we are doing now during the lockdown almost for uh, a majority uh, portion of your day which is shavasana the lying down posture Shavasana is very simple. You have to just lie down. Shav means a dead body. So it's a corpse posture. Like how a lifeless body relaxes in ultimate peace with no stress on the mind, with no worries of undone work, with no worries of COVID-19. Even the virus is outside. You're like, yeah, okay, it's a crisis. It's a public health crisis. We are trying the best we can do that. But why take stress about it, right? Stay calm, stay peaceful. So we'll do Shavasana which is the corpse posture. So for Shavasana you can lie down on your back. There will be a gap of about one, one and a half feet between your legs. You can leave your legs loose on both the sides. Don't keep any tension in your legs. You can just keep them loose on both the sides, right? And you have to lie down on your back. Hands, palms will be facing up into the sky. Eyes will be closed. Try to focus on your breathing. Please practice it on your own. After a count of 10 breathings, 10 rounds of inhalation and exhalation. Slowly get up from your left hand side. From your left hand side you have to get up not from your right rub both your palms generate some heat into your palm and foment both your eyes and relax you can foment thrice second round foment both your eyes and a third round right uh, just before I leave I need to tell you that don't skip Shavasana it looks very simple it looks very composed uh, to a lot of people it looks very useless but it is not we tell everybody in our uh, yoga ashram that if you do not do shavasana and you do any fitness workout or you do yoga bhyas for one hour, that one hour is a waste. Because if you don't relax your body, all the energies, all the oxygen that you have taken in does not reach to every individual body part where it should, the purpose is defeated. So you might have done yoga for one hour, but if you have not done shavasana in the end, you don't get the complete benefit. So remember, Shavasana is that important. It looks very insignificant. It looks like, ah, oh, what? I keep on lying down daily. I do Shavasana daily. That's all how we comment on that. Uh, but it's very integral. The entire practice of Yogasana is incomplete without practice of Shavasana. So today's session also stretched for about an hour. Um, after the uh, live class is over, uh, during the course of the day, I will put up a Hindi and an English version of all the list of exercises that we have done today, uh, including asana, pranayams, and the breathing techniques, all of them. Uh, please stay at home as guided. We don't have any option, but there's no point uh, being adventurous at this point of time. Stay at home, be safe, uh, utilize your one hour with me daily, and the rest of the day you can plan out and routinize it according to your hobbies, your uh, interest, your work, if you're working from home and things like that. Uh, there's no need to be panicked. There just need to be uh, a lot of preparation and we need to strengthen our immunity. That's the best we can do. See, when the virus attacks, who we do not know. But what is in our hand that we can do? You guys, the only fitness module that you can practice on your own, anywhere, you don't need studios, you don't need machineries, you need yourself. And you need an abled person and an abled guidance through whom you have learned yoga once. And once you have learned it well, then you can do it on your own. You don't need anybody else. Okay? So thank you so much for everybody who has joined us live. For the people who have joined us late, please try to join us at around 8 uh, a.m. tomorrow. Today we got a little late because of a technical glitch. But we aim to start at 8 daily so that we are done by 9. Uh, we will not uh, start at 8.30 and get done by 9.30. That's a little late to perform yoga. 8 to 9 is a good time. You can sleep, get up a little late in the morning and then join me live. Um, it's open, it's free, there are no web links, there are uh, no passwords. You have to just log into our uh, yoga treatments page and the video will be streaming, streaming live. You can just join us there. 
please share it with all the people who have any pulmonary issues, who have asthma, bronchitis, migraine, sinusitis, uh, or any other normal cold, cough, sneezing problem, because it's going to help you strengthen your immunity. Uh, just before I close, for those who have joined in late, uh, today's sessions and tomorrow's sessions will focus on immunity booster, how we can strengthen and build the immunity. Fridays and Saturdays class will focus on mental health because when you are at home, there's a lot of mental health issues that anybody can face. You know, people who are going through crisis, them, and those who are not even you can face them. Uh, so we need to do something about our mental health. This week, we are having classes Monday to Saturday. So we are having Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, Sunday. From next week onwards, if everybody wants the classes and you want me to continue uh, in the following week as well, we'll have classes Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll work on strengthening, building and boosting our immunity. And on Friday and Thursdays and Fridays, we'll work on mental health. So whichever class you're interested, please join us. Thank you so much. It was great sharing my yoga time with you all. And I hope to see you all daily. Thanks so much. Please have a glass of water even after performing yoga.